I said this in the beginning. I said, my son is going to be sick, but he's going to be sick in style. We are going to do everything. Nothing is going to tell me. If they tell me no, sorry, guess what? I'm going to go around and I'm going to go ahead and try again. If they always said no, I'm going to go ahead until someone's going to tell me yes. That's how I got here. Because if I would have kept saying or listened to everybody that my son will die at four years old, guess what? My son will not be here right now. My name is Sari Narvaez. This is Kevin Justin Narvaez. He was born in Puerto Rico. We had him move to Florida. And he has um, Alexander disease. And the reason why we're here is because of that. It's Alexander disease, it has to do with the white matter of the brain. Uh, one scientist says it's the astrocytes, that it, the astrocytes, my understanding, is what sticks everything. It's like a gel and it starts to deteriorate. So everything gets kind of out of control. So there are different mutations. This could go to um, teenager and adults, you could have it. But since he started seven months, it's considered infant. So usually infant don't pass no more than four, now eight, he's 10. With other mutations, then they could last a little bit longer. But they just don't know. He started having seizures at seven months and they said that it was just epileptic. So deep inside my heart, I kept saying something else is wrong. We went to many, many different doctors. I decided to move to Florida. Finally, he ended up with a seizure at two years old. Doctor came up, Dr. Raymond Fernandez. Um, and he did an MRI, checked him, and he says, I think your son has Alexander disease. Did not know what is that. He explained a little bit, they did a DNA and sent it to Washington, D.C. It came out to be positive. At that time, he was two years and a half. He's now, he's 10. At that time, they told me that um, he would not pass no more than four. Well, four came, we celebrated. Then they told me, um, six years old, no more than six years old. And the majority of the doctors, well, yes, the majority of the doctors have said to me, get ready because your son will die. With his, with his mutation and Alexander disease, they do not pass no more than four. I disagree. I said, well, maybe that's you, but not me, not my son. Eventually he will die, but not, not like this. So I kept on, um, eight went by, then something, a lot of um, news, different people have mentioned stem cell, stem cell. And I've been asking my angels, I really spiritual, and asking for my angels to give me a guidance. Because if over there they're not going to get a cure for him, then I want a better quality of life for, for my son. Well, they just told me, well, live with him until it happens. That's what they said. Just give him whatever he needs and just wait. And I refuse. I refuse. In Florida, well, they, he has PT, OT, speech. Now he's getting vital stem. He has backers, horses, um, aquatic therapy once in a while. So I, I'm, I'm constantly moving around. We went to the Keys for the dolphin therapy. Awesome. He responded excellent. So we've been moving around. Every year I try to do something different. Everybody kept saying, no, 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 no. And I went forward. I said, if there's a reason of all this, there's a reason, there's a purpose. And I'm going to go forward. Because if I don't do it, I don't want to say later on, I regret it. So I went forward. And there was one doctor and he said no. And then I looked at him in his eyes and I said, don't see him as a patient. See him as if this is your son and you're his father, what will you do? And he closed his eyes and he looked at me and he said, I will do the same thing. So that for me was like, and I said, thank you. And he did help me to get here. I just want for him to 
do at least a little bit more than what he's doing now. I want a better quality of life. I'm not looking for a cure. If there's a cure in here, hey, excellent. But I just want him to be able to start feeding my mouth. And he is, but just little. Um, more movements. You know, now he's stretching. How awesome is that when you're laying down in bed and you need to wait for someone to come up to you to stretch you. Now he does it by himself. He stretch, arms up, legs, and everything. How awesome is that? Even for his own body. Went to Hanzhou, his first treatment. And instantly I started to notice head control. His tremors got better. Um, then he started to become more aware of the environment. Now he communicates with others, not only with me. We decided that one blink, it was for yes. And no, now he starts to shake his head for no. Um, and that's for me, it's awesome. I sit him up and he's able to um, hold his head for a long time watching TV. We started working on just to stand them up. And I've noticed that he got stronger in his legs. He has said no. He has moved his arms to stretch, but he does it more subconsciously. He has said, what, subconsciously. And I tell him, you said what? And he looks at me like, like, uh-uh, like confused. But then he clicks in and he starts laughing. He said no again to my sister. Now this time it's my sister, it's not me. And I think that if the more I continue coming here, I feel that he could get better and better and better. He was no head control, so he's always constantly falling back and sideways. And now since he holds on a little bit, even in the wheelchair, even standing, he holds on a little bit, he swallows better. Mm -hmm. He's not constantly like this and <laughs> try to breathe because he cannot, you know, have the head control. So just that for me is like, woohoo, you know, like, yes, finally. Now if I pinch him or something, he goes, ah, or he cries. Now he's telling me that, okay, he feels pain now. So if something's hurting him, he's going to let me know. Even with the acupuncture. At the beginning, he was like, whatever. Now you put the acupuncture, he actually goes, ah, or he cries, or he whines, or he says something. When they do the, you know, stretching, something's wrong. He, he, he let us know that it's hurting him. Or even with the IV, with the girls, with the IV, they would do an IV on him. And he literally put his leg back that they had to do it again because he moved. But, you know, at least he's feeling something. Sometimes you have to be different. Sometimes you just have to go and be the only one. If someone, everybody's telling you no, 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 no. But inside of you, you feel that's the right thing to do. Go for it. Don't stop. Because I... Sad to say it, but I lost hope on a lot of doctors because they go inside the box. They don't go outside the box. And I have to stick with doctors that see it outside the box. What if this, what if that, and move on. I cannot just wait until a scientist in the USA to get something, you know, a, a cure or something or... or Something to give him about, you know, for Alexander disease. I cannot do that. I cannot wait. Don't lose the faith. Don't ever, ever lose the faith. Continue. That's, that's what I'm holding on. That's a miracle. Every day, every second, every minute, this miracle is all over the place. And I believe in that. It's really strongly, and I have a lot of faith. So I hold on to it.